the past few lessons, we've talked about various degrees of surprise in musical form. Now I want to talk about transitions, how to connect contrasting ideas. Oddly enough, I've never seen this discussed in a textbook. There are references to the transition between themes in a sonata form, but not to the actual technique of connecting ideas gradually. Since any piece of music that lasts more than a minute or two needs contrast, one would think that the subject of transitions would often be discussed in some detail, but that is not the case. This is especially true since gradual transitions are the norm. You can't have multiple surprises in a row. It would be like a novel where every chapter begins, and then something strange happened. This is why I devoted a whole chapter to transitions in my own book, Musical Composition, Craft, and Art. Here I'll do an example to demonstrate the process. Here are two contrasting moments from my viola concerto. How can they be smoothly connected? Here they are juxtaposed with no transition. Well, the two ideas do have some common elements. Many other things are different. One after another, like this, with no transition at all, it just sounds like a bump, a mistake, as other musicians turn two pages at once. Tempo, texture, timbre, register, and articulation are the most prominent contrasts here. And these are very salient dimensions of the music, not just subtle details. So how to connect them? Well, the first thing to do is just to list the things which need to change, as we've done above. Tempo, texture, timbre, register, and articulation. Since we're aiming at a gradual transition here, we shouldn't change more than one thing at a time. As a general principle, the more things we need to change, the more time the transition will take. Given the number of differences here, this one will not be done in two bars. Here is the new version with a fully elaborated transition. First, the initial idea is developed for a few bars in the first system. We mentioned the difference in articulation between the two ideas. The first idea alternated between legato and staccato. So let's start by gradually having it become more legato in the second system. In the middle of the second system, we start having longer groups of slurred notes and less staccato in the viola. The accompaniment is not yet changed. It remains a combination of longer notes in the woodwind and pizzicato strings. By the time we enter the third system, the viola has no more staccato notes, although the contour of its motive hasn't changed yet. Then, the lower accompaniment line, which was pizzicato, becomes arco. The legato clarinet motive, which continued across this change, helps to make this transition more gradual. Note that the viola part is also getting higher, preparing for the fuller register of the tutti passage. The strings are also starting to fill out, with viola and cello both playing arco now. The contour of the viola line is starting to anticipate what's coming. Finally, the tempo slows down in the measure preceding the tutti as the viola reaches a peak. The arrival of the tutti is triggered by the timpani stroke. So now, the two ideas fit logically into the musical flow, with the tutti arriving as a sort of big climax. Let's listen to it again. Here's the full score. This is how the technique of gradual transition works. Once you've mastered it, it's easy to make it more sudden when needed. This is a fundamental part of any composer's craft.